The, um, the, the car is, fair, as you can tell, is, is fairly simple, um, it's not complicated at all, you've got your hoses there, spark plugs, um, I'm going to take the cap off this just as a demonstration, you've got two sets of points in these distributors, each set of points does three cylinders. So um, what that did for them at the time was it gave them a longer life. Um, points are a switch. I mean, they, they take current all the time and they burn. And that's what the condenser was for, was to limit the amount of burn by cutting it on and off quicker. But they, they still burn. There's also wear on the heel of the point, which will cause the point to close up. The uh, so there is, there is maintenance needed. You need to make sure that the point gap is correct and that uh, you do have some lubrication on the, for the heel of the point and also a little bit of lubrication into the uh, felt there because there's an automatic advance in a distributor. That is, as it spins up, the bob weights throw out and it automatically advances the spark because as the engine speeds up, you want to send that spark earlier to the point that you don't want the spark at TDC, you want the fuel to start burning and the inertia of the engine to take it over. So as it burns down, it's got a good amount of burn on the top of the piston, which will make it far more efficient. So the, uh, the idea is to, to get the to get the burn going while it's still compressing. So the, you've, you've started the burn, so you get a longer duration of burn, which gives you a more efficient uh, amount of power. So that's, all the distributors for 600 are very similar to that. Um, spark plugs, best not to use a resistor spark plug. Uh, resistor spark plugs were developed to stop interference on radios not to be more efficient for cars. So the, uh, give up the efficiency of the radio and get the better burn. Um, it's, uh, it takes away that, that jump and uh, gives it a better thing. BP5ES is what the recommendation for these engines is. It's an NGK plug, no resistance, and that's it. Um, the dipstick there, Again, the oil, the oil uh, thing saves. There is one thing that you might want to use. Down here, there's a little, a little plug, an extended type bolt, and that puts oil into the gearbox of the starter motor. Because it's a reduction starter motor, that is, there's a gears in there to uh, change the speed of the Bendix, you need to put a small amount of oil in there the car sits around for many many years which so many of these cars do you need to be pumping a little bit of oil in there not every time you service it but again keep a log every couple of years you need to give it a few squirts of oil you've got the bottom hose over here you've got the top hose and then of course the bypass hose and a couple of heater hoses you really don't have a big issue for hoses it's very e efficient with hoses just enough and not uh, too many. Um, the, the heater in this car is underneath the seat. You can see down here and you need to keep an eye on these. These are the two heater hoses. They go to a round heater matrix with a fan in the middle under the passenger seat. That's worth doing. Looking, looking out for those hoses because although you have a tap on this end of the heater hose, you don't there. So if you do have a blown hose, you're going to lose your coolant. So it's worth worth worrying about. This uh, bees you with the same thing, you need to make sure that's topped up. I think he was saying a non-detergent 30, which is what I agree with. So um, that's that. If you, you've got some tools here, you've got a jack handle and you've got the uh, starting handle there, which might save you some time if you can put it, if 
if everything's lined up and you can get it in there, the car will start on that if you can just get it to fire over. But of course, the uh, distributor has to be well-timed. The points have to have a good gap. You don't want to be fighting against uh, the, uh, the, the poor maintenance of there. If you, if you have a car that's well tuned and you can pull, more or less get it to fire on the first pull, you can do it, but you don't really want to be trying to spin it over. Those days have gone where we had real men. And, uh, <laughs> this uh, this uh, um, is this uh, interesting. You can see there's a small amount of resistance there and uh, on this rotor, this is an original rotor, so often now I don't even know if these are available anymore. I don't think they are, but uh, when they're generally they've done away with those. But that is an original rotor. You uh, you want to uh, make sure that you don't have too much resistance here, because if there's a lot of build up of carbon on those, you, a little scrape on there what might save you a, you know, a bit more when you pull that thing around. So it's uh, it's worth looking at that. Uh, HT leads really they're not a they're not a big problem. They, we tend to to use metal uh, in uh, metal core rather than carbon core. Again, carbon builds up the resistance again for radio suppression. So wire core is good, but they do get old. And what will happen is the insulation breaks down and then they'll start shortening into those metal covers. So you want to keep an eye on those and at some point somebody's going to say, oh, look at the spark jump or that kind of thing. Same with the distributor caps. You might after a time get a, a jump across, so you might have a misfire there. Um, caps and leads. Again, they go for a long, long time. You don't have to be changing those every tune-up. Um, there was a tendency, I think, in about the 70s and the 80s, where they said, "Ah, oh, you need to change your leads," you know. But that's, things are changing all the time, all the time. Anyway, any questions? Pretty simple. Yeah, it's very simple compared to some of the stuff we'll see later. Yeah. <laughs>